Hey, what's up? It's your boy Dante, and I'm about to chop it up with Amir Diamond, and you're rocking with the signature. Let's go. It's the Afternoon Hustle with Amir Diamond on the Vibe special guest in the building. I'm excited that you're here because I feel like in music, we have a lot of toxic energy, but you don't really make toxic music. <laughs> it's da Dante Bo in the studio. What's up? What's up? What's up? I was going to tell you this. Like, I know David Bowie, so I'm like, Dante Bo, I hope I don't mess it up. I messed it up already. That's they, sad. Actually, I did this <laughs> huge interview yesterday with all these rock stars, and they put me in the David Bowie room. For real, for real. It's crazy you mentioned David Bowie. But it's Dante Bo. Dante Bo. Not David Bowie. No, no, no. So we're going to get it right. We're going to yes, get sir. it right. Hopefully yes, I don't sir. call you by the incorrect name again. Yes, sir. Now, listen to the album. Dude, it is so good. You said Every it's single not toxic. song. It's not, not you. You feel like it's toxic? No. Oh no, it's no. Not. It's not toxic. No, it's no, good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. I was listening like every single song. I'm like, this is my favorite song. Then the next song will come on. I'm like, this is my favorite song. Then the nice, next song will come nice, on. I'm nice. like, this is my favorite song. Nice. So you got a solid project. Thank you. Thank you. It's self titled. Yep. What happened to press play? Was that an official title for a project? Yeah, that but, was the official title for this project. But um, after finishing everything up, because I was advertising it here and there just because I was doing little interviews um, around the time I was just creating it. Mm -hmm. And so I was telling some interviewers it was press play. Ended up being Dante Bo because after we finished the project, I couldn't really put a title on it. You know what I'm saying? Because it had so many different elements, so many different genres and styles on it. And so I just named it after myself because I feel like it's a personal album, you know. So I was like, I'm just going to name it after me. You got two singles on there, Wind Me Up. You got Breaking All My Rules yeah. with Vic Mensa. Yeah. What do you think has been the fan favorite, not just out of the singles, but yeah. just on the project in general? I mean, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about Your Majesty. And I've been seeing a lot of people talk about Easy On Me. Um, that's the one. That's one of the ones where I'm like, this is my favorite. And then on the moon came on. I'm like, oh, oh I love on the yeah, moon. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a that's a hard record too. Like, I feel like I was just in my bag in a different way. I was really hanging out with my producer John John at the time, and we were um, in Carmel, California, bro. Like, mm -hmm. we were literally on the beach creating this album. So I was at home. I felt at peace. And so a lot of stuff that I would never talk about, I was start I started talking about. And then also just the sonics, like the whole beats i mean all the beats and everything i feel like it was just you know a reflection of where i was in my life you know what i mean i was having a good time you call california home mm -hmm. aren't you from north carolina i'm from north carolina i live in <laughs> dallas but my manager my manager owns a home in carmel california so i literally spent um most of my time there creating this album and, and i actually got a studio there so when did you move from north carolina and I don't know where you moved to next. I don't know if Dallas was the next spot, but how long have you been away from North Carolina? Oof, since I was 19, 20. Yeah, I moved. I tried to get out as soon as I could. Then you moved to Cali? Nah, like when I left home, I went to Tennessee, I think. And then after that, Georgia, then Nashville, now Dallas. I was researching. I'm an artist. <laughs> no, I was gonna say I, I was researching you. I didn't necessarily know, know who you were yeah. until I realized that you were with Maverick City Music. Yeah. Which, if I ask any questions that's out of line and you don't feel like answering, just let me know. Okay. But um, you were with Maverick mm -hmm. since 2019. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Was it like a bunch of different singers and they put y'all together where y'all going to the same know, church like, or something like that? I started like that? a group with like Oh, you with them, started with it. The, I started a group with the like owners like Tony and JJ and them. Like I think who's the first official member? Maybe it was me and Brandon. I need tissue. But it was me and Brandon, I think. And um we were the first two members and then we had Naomi come and then Chandler came last. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, bro, like it was just it happened naturally, quote unquote, but I think, yeah, like people had a plan, like, you know, the owners and stuff had a plan to um, make a collective of urban singers and it, it worked. Because I found out about y'all through okay. social media. I feel like there was a lot of clips of y'all going viral and y'all, I don't know if I should say were code or are code, but the clips that I've seen were code. Now, last year is when they paused their relationship with you 
correct? Right, right. After what they say <laughs> is inconsistent behavior with their <laughs> core values and beliefs. Then I was like, well, what did he do? Like, was he out wilding? Like, were no, there sexual no. videos of him somewhere? Did he beat on somebody? And they didn't confirm this, I don't think, but it was because you were rapping along to an explicit, well, to a song that may have explicit content in it? Yeah, I mean, I, it wasn't that, nah. Like, and also, it wasn't like, okay, so I accidentally posted a photo of myself that was, like, inappropriate, but it wasn't like that bad. It wasn't like a sexual photo. However, um, it was for none of that. I mean, me and Maverick hadn't been working together for a while at that point, technically, because I was I had a solo career, so I was nominated. I was the most nominated um, gospel artist ever, like in history to be nominated. I mean, I got nominated the most times in one term. Um, the first one to ever do that um, at the Grammys. I was number one in my single "Joyful." Um, I was winning the Doves, uh, Stellar's been nominated for everything. Like I was performing at everything. Like, and then I went on my own arena tour. I was the first artist to go on their first arena tour without the group. And so we were really having like this, these little feuds. I never told nobody all this, but we was having like all these little feuds at the time. And, um, I was kind of in and out. And this last tour that they went on, I just called in after I got off my forking country tour, I called in and I was like, Man, I'm sick. Like I don't, I I can't do it. And I and I did feel bad. Like I I was a little sick, but at the same time, I just really was like tired of like just being a part of a group. Man, it's really a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And uh, they was like, all right. And then they just hit my manager. Was like, just call him, to tell him to come in on the last seven dates. Like it was like we was like being petty towards each other at that point. So yeah, like I think what happened between me and them at the time with like Bad Bunny, me posting that video, dancing to Bad Bunny, or. Uh, the, the picture of myself, like, or whatever the case may be, I feel like it was just their leeway to just go ahead and pause their relationship with me. But they offered me a record deal two weeks later, but nobody knows that. <laughs> it's in my email. They offer, keep recording me. <laughs> no, I was going to say, like, you don't really need a record deal, do No, you? I have my own label. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but they did offer me another record deal two weeks later. They never, and it was never paused. They just didn't want it to come back on them and look bad and all this stuff and but I this what's out there about me is just out there about all them. So what space are you in right now regarding that situation? Oh, I'm cool. Like I, I really do wish them well. Like I feel like um I just feel like I hope everybody the more the merrier. Like I hope they do well. I hope I do well and You will do well. You yeah, are doing well. I am I am doing well. Like I was number one on iTunes. I am number one You know what's crazy? I found out yesterday I'm number one new R and B on a Tesla car. Come while, on now. While, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, like I just I it didn't it didn't kill me, but I mean they tried to. They tried to. But you're still here. I'm still here, bro. I'm chilling. They chilling too, I hope. It's Dante Bo in the studio. New project out (laughs) right now. Self-titled. Make sure you stream stream it. Every time somebody comes through, I play this game with them called Through the Ringer. Okay. To get to learn more about them. So I'm going to start with what is your favorite go-to karaoke song? Oh, man. I don't even do karaoke. Um, Somebody else told me that too Because I guess Like people who sing They I guess the crowd Probably won't really like them They want to hear people Who can't sing Whenever they're doing karaoke Is that the reason Or no Nah Like I like hearing people That can sing Like my homegirl Her and her husband We all went out And did um, Went to the karaoke bar And she sang And she could sing And it was like The people were like Clapping and stuff All right, I think mine Would have to be The last time I did sing On karaoke It's probably like A Usher song um, maybe simple things. Simple things in life we forget. Did you get to see him in Vegas? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good. It was good. But why did you say you don't like doing karaoke? Because um, I'm shy. <laughs> like to me, I have to be like, I need like a little tequila soda or something before mm-hmm. I do karaoke. I can't just do karaoke. One of your favorite childhood memories. My favorite childhood memory is like Christmas with my brother. Um, my mom used to buy us a bunch of toys, like a lot of toys. I remember the living room used to be covered with like presents and stuff like that. That was probably my happiest moments as a kid. But I had a lot of happy moments as a kid. What's one goal that you've been trying to reach recently? Blowing up as a solo artist. Just just creating a new fan base. Mm-hmm. What's one of the last things that disappointed you? 
Oh, my interview yesterday. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> We won't call a person out. I did a huge rock and roll interview yesterday, and I was literally in there with rock stars, like for real, for real rock stars, legends, and I didn't know much about rock and roll, man. They was asking me questions. I really couldn't answer, but yeah. I don't even want to talk about that experience because... I effed up your name at the beginning of the interview, and then I finally got it right. So now that we're talking about rock and roll, I don't want to go there again. So we're going to go to the next question, which is, what's one of your best qualities? A loyalty. What's one of your worst qualities? Procrastination. <laughs> what would you say has been one of the darkest times of your life that was difficult to get through? When Maverick played me. Hmm. How'd you get through it? Um, my friends, my friends, yeah, my family. What is one piece of advice that you would give to your 14-year-old self? Wow. Like, go with your gut every time. Even If it's a relationship you're trying to be in, if it's a friendship you want, if it's a business deal and a contract, whatever, go with your gut. There was times I didn't go with my gut and I had to pay for it. What's one of your favorite church songs? Or church singers? Favorite church song or church singer? Uh, my favorite church singer would probably be, probably be like Kiara Sheard. Favorite church song? Uh, any hymn. Favorite quote or words to live by? Favorite quote or words to live by? Um, you only live once. I just knew you was going to give us a scripture, so favorite scripture? Favorite scripture, um, Psalms 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And Honestly. last but not least, does pineapple go on pizza? Yeah. <laughs> For sure. He it said does. that. It's easy. It does. <laughs> Just pineapple by itself, or do you put other toppings if on along with it? you put all that other it? stuff on pizza y'all be putting on pizza, you could put a pineapple on a pizza. Thank you. That's how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> y'all put barbecues. Y'all do all kind of stuff to y'all pizza. Do what you want. Yeah. It's Dante Bo in the studio. Thank you for coming through, broski. Bro, thanks for having me, man. It was dope. Make sure you stream the new album. Tell yes. them where to get it. You can get it anywhere you down, anywhere you get music. So Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. I got a new video out on YouTube, by the way. Produced, I mean, uh, directed by Sean Bankhead. So it's fly. Anywhere you get music, you can get my album. And you got to tell them that Vic Mintz is on a project, too. Vic Mintz is on a project. Ja'Kayla Carr is on a project. Ja'Kayla Carr. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's epic. Thank you, man. <laughs> it's Dante Bo in the Afternoon Hustle with Amir Diamond on The Vibe.